Welcome back. Trial has commenced at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos against the former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzokalu. The former governor was in court as proceedings in the case against him started from Monday the 6th to Thursday the 9th of March. In this next report, we look at the case against the former governor and proceedings so far in this developing story. Dr. Oji Kalu, his company, Slock Nigeria Limited, and one Ude Jones Odeogu were on October 31, 2016, arraigned before the court by the EFCC on a 34-count charge of alleged 3.2 billion naira fraud. Their rearrangement followed the transfer of their case from the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court to the Lagos Division. In the charges, the defendants were alleged to have siphoned some Abia State government funds while Dr. Oji Kalu was governor between 1999 and 2007. The former governor was accused of diverting the state funds into the account of Slock Nigeria Limited, a company the EFCC says is owned by him and his family members. Trial in the matter was scheduled to commence on Monday the 6th of March, but the proceedings were stalled following the failure of the prosecution to serve the statement of one of its witnesses on the defense team. Justice Mohammed Idris had directed the EFCC to call its first prosecution witness. The witness on Nova Ogenovo was about to begin his testimony when lawyer to the second and third defendants, Chief Solo Akuma S.A.N., drew the court's attention to the fact that his statement was not part of the proof of evidence given to him by the prosecution. The EFCC's lawyer, Rutimi Jacobs, S.A.N., urged the court to discountenance the submissions of the defendants, insisting that the witness was in court by virtue of a court's order summoning him to appear and as such, the commission should not be concerned about providing a statement. On Tuesday, the 7th of March, Justice Mohammed Idris ruled on the eligibility of the witness to testify. The court agreed with the EFCC that the witness, having been subpoenaed, should be allowed to testify in the matter, irrespective of whether his statement was available or not. The proceedings then got off to a start and soon ran into another hitch. Attempts by the prosecution to tender a document through the witness was rejected by the defendants, who insisted that the document was not properly certified. EFCC has suddenly assumed the global role of being certifiers of documents that are not their own. So we objected to this, that it is not legally tenable that in law, a person who neither made a document nor is in custody of the document will now suddenly come and be the certifier of the document. This is the kind of objection they are raising to an original document. Saying the original document is not properly certified, it's not this, it's not that. You know, this is ridiculous. On Wednesday, the 8th of March, Justice Idris, in a ruling on the issue, held that the document being an original needed no certification. It was therefore admitted in evidence as an exhibit before the courts. The witness, in continuation of his testimony, told the court that 23 drafts paid to different people were drawn from the Abia State Government House. He, however, pointed out on the cross-examination that none of the defendants' names were in the drafts or the checks. He also told the court that they were not the persons who gave instructions for the issuance of the drafts. A second prosecution witness, one Christiana Ohiri, a banker, also testified. Her testimony was, however, cut short following an objection raised by the defense team on the admissibility of the documents, which includes account statements being tendered by the witness, on the ground that they were also not certified. The defense team asked the court not to listen to the second witness on the ground that her name was also not listed in the proof of evidence. Justice Idris had to write another ruling. On Thursday in the night of March, he held that the witness, though competent to give evidence in the matter, was not properly before the court. He therefore directed the prosecution to immediately take necessary steps to comply with the provisions of Section 379, Subsection 1 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and ensure that all necessary processes were served on the defendants. The court later adjourned to April 10 for continuation of trial. After the adjournment, the first defendant, former Governor Ojikalu, told journalists that his belief in the impartiality of the Nigerian judiciary remains unshaken. I put my reservation to my heart, but I can see a judge that is ready to work. I have been here for almost one week, every day, and this judge gives the time. He addresses every issue, whether it's in my favor or not in my favor. The most important thing 
he has the ability to make decision and possibly according to the law. So uh, this impression, if all judges can always work like this judge, I, I, uh, I cannot say he's a very nice judge until I get to the crossroad where he will use all laws to judge me. If I'm wrong, he should punish me. If I'm right, he should discharge me yeah, and apply yeah. to me. I'm not afraid of judges making decisions. Yeah. But what I'm afraid of, people deliberately making wrong decisions. And just before we go, let's quickly do a recap of some of the top trending legal stories. A High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Maitama, on Thursday, March the 9th, sentenced to death two former policemen, Ezekiel Achenege and Emmanuel Baba, for being responsible for the death of two out of the six auto spare part traders shot dead in Area 11 of Gurki Abuja on June the 7th, 2005. After 11 years of trial, the presiding judge and chief judge of the FCT High Court, Justice Ishak Bello, convicted the two former cops of culpable homicide punishable by death under Section 221A of the Penal Code Act. The judge, however, freed three other policemen. The judge, who noted that there was shoddy investigation of the case, held that there was contradictory and insufficient evidence to hold the three of them culpable in the murder of the victims. For those convicted, Justice Bello held that their confessional statement was an admission of commission of a crime and the subsequent retraction of the statements during trial was merely an afterthought. Staying in Abuja, the ECOWAS court has dismissed an application filed by the federal government seeking to quash a suit filed by the self-styled leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Namdi Kanu. The suit by the EPUB leader is seeking his unconditional release and $800 million in damages. The federal government in its application had asked the court to dismiss the case because it's a subject matter before the Federal High Court and the Appeal Court, and as such, it constitutes an abuse of court process. Presiding Judge Justice Michael Wright Williams, in his ruling, however, dismissed the application for lacking in merit because, according to him, the ECOWAS Court has the jurisdiction to hear cases of infringement of human rights. And in Lagos, a witness of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Adewale Oshodi, on Friday, March the 10th, told Justice Hakim Oshodi of the Lagos High Court sitting in the Ikeja area how he did not verify the huge amounts of money a judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia, gave him to pay into a dollar account domiciled in Diamond Bank. The witness was the branch manager of one of the branches of the bank during cross-examination further told the court that though he was expected to ask for the source of the funds from his customers, he decided to look the other way because Justice Ajumogobia was a high net worth customer. Justice Ophelia Ajumogobia is standing trial alongside a senior advocate of Nigeria, Godwin Obla, who was charged with offering her a 5 million naira bribe. The EFCC also accused Justice Ajumogobia of living above her means as a public officer. The presiding judge, Justice Hakim Oshodi, has adjourned till March the 17th for further proceedings in the matter. And we round off with a report that two Chinese, Tao Shen and Jing Yao, on Wednesday, March the 8th, appeared before a federal high court in Lagos over charges bordering on alleged importation of fake tires. Shen, 36, and 22-year-old Yao are charged alongside a Nigerian, Chinedu Madubike, and two companies, Sinonage Import and Export Limited, and Nadeka International Limited on four counts bordering on importation of the substandard products. The accused were called into the dock, but their arraignment could not proceed owing to the absence of a Chinese interpreter to translate the charges to them in Chinese language. The trial judge, Justice Mojisola Olatoregu, consequently ordered that an interpreter be produced in court at the next adjourned date of March the 20th for the defendants to take their plea. And just before we go, let's quickly do a recap of some of the top trending legal stories. And that's the program for today. Please send in any questions or comments about the program and indeed any area of the law. You can watch this episode again or even past ones on our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Shehili. Thank you for watching.